I'm Robert Bacall and uh, welcome to the sec session 2A of our course on dealing with angry customers. In the previous video uh, I presented to you a phone call uh, into a computer support center and you, if you if you listen to that, and you really should listen to that before continuing here, uh, you would have heard the phone call uh, get nasty almost from square one, where the and the customer become is abusive. Uh, and what I asked you to do is to answer some questions about how well the employee did in dealing with the same customer. Okay, it's actually a great case. Uh, and, and in fact, we could probably analyze it for hours. There's a lot to it when you get down to the actual words that the uh, individual uses to try and deal with a angry customer. In any event, uh, it didn't really go very well. And so one of the things I asked was, what did the employee do well? Well, number one, he really did stay calm in the face of an incredible amount of yelling and swearing and abuse. And so that's a really important part of this. He did that very well. Uh, number two, and this is a double-edged sword I'll talk to you about in a minute, is that he worked really hard to get information from the angry customer so he could solve the problem. Mind you, that didn't work. And so we need to talk about why it didn't work. And that's going to bring us to our first principle. Okay. Now number one, let, why didn't it work? The customer wasn't ready to problem solve. The customer was not ready to answer questions calmly. The customer was so angry and so emotional that he really was not processing very rationally. Yes, he did answer some of the questions, but his frustration was so high uh, that he, he just wasn't ready. And that's really important. When the emotions are high on the part of the customer, it is almost a complete waste of time to try and solve the problem. Okay. And you, see, you, you hear that in this, in this audio. In fact, it almost seems like the more the, the employee asks questions, the angrier the individual gets. And one of the reasons is that at that point in time, the customer wants two things. He wants his problem solved, yes, quickly. But he also needs his emotions to be recognized. And that's one thing that it obviously is missing from this employee's repertoire of skills. Okay, so that brings us to uh, the first principle that we need to talk about. And this has to do with the most common mistake customer service people make when dealing with angry customers. And on the surface of it, the mistake is kind of, it, it, it makes sense to, to do it. Okay, with customer got a problem, fix it. But it doesn't work that way. Okay, the principle is, is this, deal with the feelings first. If you don't deal with the feelings first, you get exactly what happens in this audio situation, in this phone call. The customer is too angry to problem solve, to respond, and as a result, the, customer, the employee completely loses control of how this interaction goes. It goes on for about 10 minutes. It's probably something that should have been handled in two minutes, which is a good example mind, of, of how angry customers eat up your time. Okay, so that's the principle. I know it makes sense to address the problems, but you can't address the problems with an angry person who's not ready. They're not acting completely rationally. They're not thinking clearly, so you need to diffuse them. Okay, it's about the anger. The second thing I want to mention is a, it's a second principle, and that principle goes, don't come across as bureaucratic. Now, when I listen to the employee dealing with this angry situation, okay, yes, I hear calm, but it also sounds like he's going through an automatic checklist of things that he's trying to ask. He doesn't really come across as a person. He doesn't really come across as, a, as someone who's even interested. His affect is flat, and he just sounds really stiff and bureaucratic, and that makes a huge difference, and I'll tell you why. The 
we know from a lot of research in terms of abuse to women that one of the reasons why women are on the receiving end of so much verbal and physical abuse is because our society traditionally has objectified them and that means that they are treated as objects okay and we also know that when a person sees another person as an as a, as a thing rather than a real life person they are much more likely to be abusive and nasty towards them so what what it means when we say don't come across as bureaucratic is that you have to sound like a regular person. You can't sound like you're reading a script. You can't sound like you're a machine. You can't sound like you don't care that you're part of this bureaucratic machinery because if you do that you're going to escalate things. In all probability the angry customer is going to get more angry because he or she is not getting number one the emotional acknowledgement and number two doesn't feel like you give a damn that you're just going through the motions. Okay so to sum up so far and we'll come probably come back to this audio uh, again. Two principles number one or number two don't come across as bureaucratic don't care how tired you are it's you that will bear the brunt if you come across as bureaucratic and the angry customer gets worse okay and the first one we talked about deal with the emotions first that's going to be a theme that's going to run through a lot of what we do when I explain to you what the CARP model is for diffusing when we talk about empathy when we talk about listening but it is important to know that the emotional side is just half of the equation and I'm going to be explaining that in uh, in future episodes. Okay, so if you haven't listened to the to the previous audio and the and done the exercises, you can still do it now because there's a lot more you can pick up about what the employee said, didn't say that was that might have been good, that might have been bad, that worked.